Pierre Polivier wants to fire the Bank of Canada chair. Recently, Conservative Pierre Polivier said that if he was elected Prime Minister, he would fire Bank of Canada Governor Tiff Macklem on account of the 7% inflation rate presently plaguing Canadian consumers. But simply replacing the figurehead in charge of the Bank of Canada isn't enough. Instead, we should abolish the Bank of Canada itself. The institution of central banking is one that has always been shrouded in mystery. There's very little discussion in the media about monetary policy or the role of the central bank itself. Um, there's there's uh, profound confusion about the role of the central bank uh, and the business cycle. And this confusion has to do with the timing of the introduction of the central banking. Central banking was first introduced in the late 17th century, most notably with the Anglican uh, Bank of England in the 1690s. And this was also the same time that uh, modern industrial capitalism and the business cycle uh, were first um, being introduced. So there's a tremendous confusion with economists like Karl Marx, who noticed that these things happened at the same time and then came to the conclusion that the business cycle originated somewhere within the machinery of capitalism itself. But in reality, the business cycle uh, was the fault of the central banks. So what happens with the business cycle is that the central bank artificially lowers interest rates by purchasing government bonds with money that they create out of nothing. This process is inflationary, but it also sends a signal to entrepreneurs that there's a greater demand for capital goods. Um, because in the, in the market economy, the interest rate is determined by the supply of vulnerable funds um, so the, if, if consumers, um, if consumers are saving more of their income, then there's going to be a greater pool of vulnerable funds and thus factors of production, um, should be, should be realigned along that basis so that, um, there's more investment, uh, more, more. Uh, production of capital goods as opposed to consumer goods. So, uh, capital goods, well, capital is man made factors of production like factories or, or machinery or anything that's about labor or land, land being natural resources. Um, so, so, uh, uh, consumer goods, obviously, stuff that you, you know, food or uh, TV, stuff that you know, you just, you sort of, you don't, you don't use that to produce anything else. You just consume it, right? Some things like uh, cars are probably dual use. They're consumer goods and capital goods. But, um, so, so when the central bank starts buying up uh, these government bonds and artificially lowering interest rates, uh, they're telling there's a signal to entrepreneurs that that resources need to be allocated in capital goods industries, uh, but this isn't this isn't an actual this doesn't actually describe the the way reality is the, the way the consumer demand is. So ultimately, these investments in capital goods industries are deemed to be uneconomic because there actually hasn't been a shift in time preference. People haven't actually started saving more money, it just appears that way to entrepreneurs. So, so eventually those investments need to be liquidated and, and instead go towards, um, go towards consumer, the production of consumer goods. And, and that liquidation is, is the, the bust, the depression, the recession. And ironically, it's actually the healthy phase of a business cycle. Now it's where there's, higher unemployment and prices are going down and things look bad. But actually what's happening is that factors of production are being realigned along the basis of consumer demand. It's, it's fixing itself. The problem is fixing itself. 
um, uh, but it's it's a problem you don't need um, the the mal investments in the first place. So ultimately, there's no need for a central bank whatsoever. Any amount of money supply is enough, and printing money does not create wealth. Okay, um, but but it does have many negative effects. You know, it penalizes thrift, it punishes savers, it transfers wealth between uh, two debtors away from creditors. So abolishing the Bank of Canada and returning to sound money with a fixed money supply, like the gold standard, would allow us to enjoy steady prosperity instead of suffering through the unnecessary ups and downs of the business cycle.